I welcome this opportunity uh, to contribute to this debate um, today. As we know, early last summer, last May, Ireland was once again the subject of international media attention for all the wrong reasons, because of a story of the mass graves at the Tomb Mother and Baby Home. The coverage at the time and subsequent contributions at the time at times uh, proved to be sensational and played little regard uh, to the fact that what was being said and what was re being reported had very real impact on so many families' lives. And I'm conscious that what we say uh, here today and in the past and in the future uh, has a real impact on so many people's lives. The most positive outcome of this story was it proved to be a catalyst into the establishment of this commission of investigation. And from the outset, I and my party advocated and supported the establishment of this commission in order to shine a light and establish the true facts of what took place in a dark phase of our past. We have heard the stories of many of the barbaric practices solely and exclusively because women had children out of wedlock. We have heard the stories from this era where children, because they were born to unmarried mothers, were treated like chattels rather than human beings. I want to put on record of this House my admiration and my thanks to the many survivors who came forward and spoke so movingly, so truthfully, and who chose to share their very personal stories in order so that these terms of reference could meet the ex expectations of the many women and children who went through these institutions. And I wish to acknowledge the presence of a number of them in the gallery here today. And I call these institutions rather than homes. Because when we think of homes, we think of places of love, we think of places of security, we think of places where people feel safe. And when you listen to the stories, Minister, and I know you did, and when I listened to the stories, there was no feeling of love, there was no feeling of security. And I was very humbled to hear these stories and that they chose to share them with us. And when you hear stories of siblings in the same institution not knowing that they were brother and sister, when you hear stories of identity theft, it made me realise just how fortunate I was growing up to have a loving home. And it made me also realise that we are in a very fortunate position as legislators here today. We're in a privileged position that we can ensure that the people who had to endure many, many years of suffering in these institutions can have their stories heard, can have the proper commission of investigation set up so that their stories will be heard, so that we as a state uh, can apologise, so that people who are guilty of these barbaric practices can be held accountable. And I think that's what we have to do. We have to get it right. And I do want to acknowledge uh, the role you played, Minister, and your officials. Um, to be honest, I was very worried at the outset that the terms of reference would be a lot narrower than what they turned out to be. And I acknowledge that in hindsight, it was prudent that you took the additional time uh, to meet with the survivor groups to meet with us on the opposition benches and to hear uh, the concerns of uh, so many groups in terms of what they wanted included. And it has to be acknowledged, you did go a long way, and I want to put that uh, on the record of, of the doll. You listened to the fact uh, that they wanted a commission made up of renowned in, uh, personnel you appointed Judge Yvonne Murphy, and no one could dispute that. You listened to the fact that the, commission, the survivors wanted an international expert uh, on that commission. You listened, you and you subsequently put someone on that. And I want to acknowledge that, and I want to wish uh, the commission and indeed all the staff 
uh, the very best of luck. You have ensured that there is a tight time frame, that this cannot go on indefinitely, and that is important, important because there are so many people, because of their age, need to have answers a lot sooner. You have included the entry arrangements and exit pathways of single women. You have included the living arrangements and the care arrangements of these institutions, because, as I said at the outset, so many of these were so barbaric, it is not comprehensible uh, with us today in modern society. The mortality rates, we know that uh, infants, uh, the mortality rate was 3.8 times uh, what they were for children who were um, in a loving environment. We know that the post-mortem practices are going to be dealt with. The the, the, the compliance with the relevant regulatory and ethical standards and the entry uh, arrangements and exit pathways uh, for mothers and children leaving in institutions. The one thing that you, you, I want to make a point on, Minister, is you said the groups have been systematically treated differently on grounds including race, disability and religion, but you fail to recognise that possibly one of the main reasons they were treated differently was marital status. And I think maybe that's something that you should look at. As I said, we have all forcefully advocated that no institution should be left out, that this should be an inclusive commission. And, Minister, can I say, let it be the ultimate commission of investigation. Let's ensure that no victim is left out in the cold. And I would support calls uh, for survivor groups uh, to have further institutions included, because it would ultimately save the state money in the long run when it eliminates the need uh, for further inquiries. And the most recent inquiry established by this government, the Magdalen Laudries, that was widely criticised for the absence of elements of independence and transparency both of which are necessary ingredients for any, any, any inquiry. And I would say, Minister, don't make the same mistakes. Listen to advice now. Let's ensure that all practices of how we as a state, as a society, failed vulnerable women and children that were commonly known as illegitimate at the time. And Minister, you have consistently said, and you said in your speech here today, Article 6, that everyone will have the opportunity to share their experience. And this is primarily dealt with in the social history model. And there's no guarantee that even if the Commission does seek approval to expand or remit uh, further, that it will be approved. We know we have an election in less than 18 months' time. You can't give that commitment, Minister, because you may not be the Minister uh, when the first interim report re comes back. And can I ask, what is the threshold for inclusion? Outside of the named institutions, the onus is on the victim to prove additional institution warrant investigation. Surely, Minister, the starting point should be to believe the victim. We have said we acknowledge the contributions that these people have made when they came to meet me, my colleagues on the right behind me, and indeed when they came to meet yourself. As a country, we have a very checkered history of believing victims, especially children. Have we learned nothing? We shouldn't be re-victimising the victim, but rather we should support the victim who had to deal with state-sanctioned abuse. And the fact that this abuse is in a distant origin does not lessen the crime. Abuse is abuse, Minister. And I want to just read from a contribution that I received. And it said, while the flexible phrase children's home is used, the Minister more or less said it was up to the Commission to decide which homes to investigate. We believe West Bank, Temple Hill, at all will be included. However, the fact that several of the best known and widely institu used institutions have been omitted by name is a concern, and one that can be eased for survivors in, in an instant by simply 
naming the following institution after the generic list in the terms of reference. And we have made that um, amendment, so I'm not going to read it in. There are 10 in total, and they're all vital to addressing the concerns of the survivor community. Since they're almost certain to be included by the Commission, why not include them now and sort out a large part of concerns of many individuals who feel an enormous sense of relief just to read their names. Minister, the phenomenon of child trafficking is not a recent one. This is what happened many children born under the stigma of illegitimacy, and sometimes not. Children were conveniently exported for cash with no safeguards and no regard to the constitutional right of their family. A legal framework of adoptions was established on the 1st of January 1953, yet many children were removed from families and in direct contravention to the safeguards and provisions of this Act. Recently I met a lady who was fortunate to be adopted, but she was, gave a powerful story of a woman who herself said she was fortunate to have escaped the harshness and bleakness of life in West Bank. But what her story reveals is more troubling, that it was an illegal adoption despite the fact that we had a legislative framework in place. And the Adoption Act talks about consent being full, free and, and informed, and an only option for unmarried people. This is not the case. This investigation begins and ends with the prescribed list of mother and baby homes. The Adoption Rights Alliance fears that this leaves in the region of 60 to 70 per cent of all unmarried girls and women whose children were forcefully adopted beyond the scope of the investigation. We need to revisit this, Minister. We need to revisit the exclusion of private adoption agencies because it is well documented and there is evidence of abuse in the adoption system. And it would be best to deal with this by way of commission. And we, re we repeatedly said that this needs to be the ultimate commission this needs to be a commission that all people can have their voices heard. And it was a disappointment last week, Minister, that legislation that was promised for four years, the legislation which would enable people to find truth and their true identity, remains unpublished. And I'm talking about the Information and Tracing Bill. This needs to deal with all people who wish to have answers and who have the right to have such answers. And it must not deal, Minister, with prospective adoptions. Failure to do this would be a grievous insult to the mothers and children who so bravely shared with the nation their stories. And it would undermine and undo the positive contribution which you have made, and again, which I wish to acknowledge. Minister, I want to briefly touch on two other points. This week in my clinic at home, I was approached by siblings who had vaccine trials tested on them. They lived in the vicinity of a mother and baby home, and they vividly remember these trials being carried out. They feel that perhaps the doctor in question wanted to make comparisons on what the trials would be like of children in a normal home and children who were brought up in an institution. They feel their story is not going to be heard. They have been in regular contact with the Department of Health. They cannot get access to their records. I think that's something that we need to look at. We need to ensure, and I said this repeatedly when we met, Minister, that everybody knows this is happening that if this is advertised as widely as possible, so people do know that they can come forward in a very sensitive, in a confidential manner, and that their story will be heard. And finally, Minister, in relation to the single most important issue for many of the elderly survivors is the failure to separate the commission of inquiry from an acknowledgement, apology and redress. 
And obviously, there's culpability on behalf of religious, there's culpability on behalf of the state. But the state is the ultimate, per, ultimate protector, protector of our citizens. And the UN Human Rights Committee has consistently criticised Ireland's failure to provide adequate redre redress circumstances of state wrongdoing. By virtue of the fact that this commission has been established is an acknowledgement by the state of wrongdoing. It's disingenuous not to make provision for redress given the fact that it will be inevitable when the Commission issues its preliminary report in 18 months. The terms of reference, Minister, has come a long way from what was originally muted. This happened because you listened to opposition members, you listened to survivors, you listened to advocacy group. Let's make this the ultimate Commission. Let's ensure that no victim is left out in the cold. You have an opportunity, Minister, to leave a very positive legacy in this area by doing the right thing. And I would appeal that you listen to the concerns that are advocated here today and act accordingly.